harmonics, chords, scale sequences, and some fast stuff. You knew there had to be fast stuff. Let's get at it. Shred Shed edition number two of Metal Base Monday. So let's start breaking this one down. A couple of basic techniques going on here. One is, is that I'm creating chords by just using a bass note that's fretted, and then the upper notes are all harmonics. I was using a chorus in the actual demo, but it's all the same. It's just, you know, an effect to add some sparkle and stuff. You don't need it to be able to pull this off. We'll see how that goes. But again, it's a really common technique, and I find it's pretty fun. I'm doing it fairly rapidly, but it's not that complex. I'm doing the same maneuver over and over. It's going to look like this. So for the first one, I'm at the eighth fret on the E string, and I'm fretting with my middle finger, and I'm plucking that with my thumb. Then successively, I'm barring with my index finger here across the seventh and going... Okay, so if you watch my right hand, there's kind of a roll going on. And I'm giving it a little bit of a lift as I go to keep it abbreviated and let the chords, you know, sound out a little better. Instead of you know, kind of turning to mush, it's... So just kind of releasing tension as I go to each one. So the first two are basically the same. It's you're doing that same maneuver, middle finger on the fret, and then the fret wire below it, you're sounding off those harmonics. So it'd be eight and seven there, and then I'm moving down to six and five. Then what I do is just a quick adjustment for the last two, and they're both gonna be the same. We have the fifth fret, with my uh, pointer finger here, and all the harmonics are on the seven. And then the same thing on the third fret for the G. Actually, I didn't bring that one out. So I'm just rolling it in a very quick kind of pull off each time. It's just one continuous movement. If you want to get this down, just sitting, you know, kind of getting, it's almost a flamenco pluck. You can see it in, you know, uh, I think Sheehan does this type of stuff, but you can especially see it in a lot of acoustic things, stuff like that, but it's just a forward roll. So really not that complex. And then I go to the in-between bass line in between the two different pieces. You have it's just open to the octave at the seventh, and then down to the fifth fret for the seventh, and a hammer on. It's the same each time. It's just low string open to the octave, Pulling up. So let's take a look at the riff part. We're starting here on the seventh fret of the A string, and we're just doing our minor scale, basically the first four notes seven, nine, ten, and then seven on the D string. That's all that part is. It's just done pretty quickly. Again, simple ideas done rapidly. Uh, a quick aside here is really when you're playing fast things, that's the key to a lot of it. A lot of people try and create really randomized, crazy type of things. I find that if you know what you're doing ahead of time and you have a little bag of things that you want to work with, that's going to really 
you know, keep an idea simple and be able to repeat it and do it with cleanliness and precision. And that's going to pay off a lot better. So after that, again, is that same bass line going in. So let's take a look at that one up front too. Make sure we have it down. It's that open uh, seventh fret, back to the open, then to the pull up from the fifth to the seventh. Again, that's all there is in between. So on the second variation, what we're doing is we're just playing six notes of the minor scale. So it's going to be the same shape on both the A and D strings. You're still going to play that one rapid part four times. But on the fourth time, you're going to run straight up the scale. So you get... That's going to be... Again, we already have 7, 9, 10. We're going to go to 7, 9, 10 on the D string. So the full descending riff goes... So we're just going up and back the same notes. Then to the fifth on the A string. Eight, seven, five. Then three, open. The last piece is you have the seventh fret harmonics. E still ringing out. And then since this is what most people do is because it's the easiest is doing you know, the harmonics all on the same fret. We'll tag it with something a little interesting and something at the end where we're going to do the fourth fret on the D string and the fifth fret on the G. Kind of interesting, a little bit more dissonant. So you get... So I'm going to go slowly through the whole piece. And that's it. So inside of this, there's a couple of really interesting and useful ideas. Uh, what's to me kind of intriguing about it and why I like this exercise so much is it combines a couple of different ideas and it gives you some ways of creating bass lines with more advanced or fast movement type of things. Like I said, this is a bit more of a solo piece type of thing and I wanted to get some chops under your hands. But you can do kind of erratic or speed note things or just break out at different points, especially with the type of things, and just do something that, say, like with a drummer that's going bat -da -bat -da -bat -da -bat, and create something really off to the side where you jump forward a bit in the middle of a bass line. That's why I did, you know, I alternated it with a bass line to show you could jump from one to the other, and that's kind of an idea. But I use these harmonics a lot, and... I really enjoy them because it allows me to spread out a lot. You can do the same type of thing on, you know, the A string, trying ideas like that. Try out different things. Just create chord shapes by, you know... See what you can come up with. So, have you worked a lot with harmonics or do you use them just to tune? Is it something that you've messed with a lot? And have you either worked with uh, scale sequencing before? We did it in the last Shred Shed episode. Or is this something entirely new to you? Let me know what you think of these ideas. And if you've used them before, hit me up in the comments. I always like talking about it afterward. And let me know.
let me know if harmonics and things like that are something you'd like a, you know more exploration on that type of thing we'll be touching on a number of different techniques as we go on so that one's gonna wrap up for this week and as always for patrons thank you so much and uh you'll be getting the drum tracks to this one in three different speeds to be able to practice over so check that out i'll have that link posted for you guys uh in the description of this week's video uh i won't be doing a patron only video for this because there just wasn't that much more to deep dive in uh you know the the techniques were pretty self-explanatory on this one and there wasn't much more to say beyond how to you know do the roll picking and just kind of make that twist and that was really about as deep as it went if you do have questions though absolutely hit me up in the the patron comments and questions or send me a message and i'm always happy to answer so with that we'll wrap this one up thanks as always for checking it out i will see you on the next one